I've got a clicker. Yeah, good. So it's great to see so many familiar faces in the audience again. Um, so thank you for coming along. Who was here in 2019? Let's have a show of hands. It's quite a good proportion there. And it's amazing, isn't it, how much our entire thinking has changed over the last two years. It's the way just there's been a massive revolution in the property market, in the way we work. So why is, why is that? Obviously, we were forced to work from home for a long, long period. And it actually proved to us something that we really didn't agree with for a long time. We didn't think it was possible. But it actually proved to us, technically, we can work from home. And it's changed our thinking. So there's a lot of people still working from home, particularly the bigger companies. Um, and we're seeing them return. And it's really driven a change in the purpose of workplace. So it's not any longer that place where we just go to work every single day. It's now that social hub. It's that learning and training center. It's that meeting point. And it's just taken on a really different look. So there's three key elements I want to talk about today that is really important for successfully implementing a new way of working in your workplace. And the first is choice. The second is well-being for your staff. And the third, I just want to run over some key actionable design tips that will really help you on your journey in that. So before we go too far, um, probably ought to explain a little bit about what I do. So I actually work on the stage before design. And it's about understanding clients. It's called workplace strategy. And that's all about understanding the demographics of your teams, what activities are going on, so we can design a space that's actually tailored to those activities and make it really productive. So recently, I've been working with a client in the finance industry. They've got about 400 staff, and they're going to the big buzzword, hybrid. And what we found out very early on you see, the hybrid's where you work from home and the office, and there's a lot of imbalance there. But what we found very early on with the key stakeholder engagement workshops with the, the top leadership team there is that the choice between home and the office had to be lying with the staff themselves, and that was absolutely fundamental to the success of the project. And I can imagine what you're all thinking. That's made quite a few logistical problems, and yes, it did. How do you actually manage that? How do you know when people are going to be in, how many people are going to be in, what they're going to do when they come there, when they're choosing what happens? But it was absolutely fundamental to the success of that project, so we helped them through it. So we've had a recap on, obviously, the choices between working from home and working in the office, but it goes further than that. It comes down to the choices we have when we are in the office, and that's where the way of working comes in. It's a, one of the ways of working is activity-based, so it's much more flexible, or some people call it agile. So just ping up an example of a space that's designed for that, because it's very different to a standard desking layout. And this is not about giving everyone their own desk in their own space. It's about offering a wide range of activity, sorry, environments to support those activities that are going on in the workplace. So down in this bottom end, you can see some collaborative spaces. And that's really going to encourage interaction between your team, encourage those connections and discussions. But you've also got to look after people who want to focus and just get away from distractions. So you've also got these quiet areas. You've got these booths down this side where people can tuck themselves away and cut out these distractions and focus on the task in hand. It's about creating spaces that are designed around a specific activity and making sure that they're really, really productive for that. And what that's going to do is really boost the productivity of your team. So it's a bit like lunch, isn't it? It's a buffet. Everyone's eating, but they're all choosing what they eat, and they're choosing when they eat it and where they eat it. But everyone's eating at the same time, and that's the way our workplace is going to look going forward. And you know, I, I firmly believe this can work. Um, I've been lucky enough to work with some of the large names, big multinational companies like Ernst & Young, Cummins, and seen this model work for them in the years gone by, and it can certainly work on the South Coast today. I'm absolutely sure of that. So moving on to well-being. Now, this is really important, especially in today's world. The world has been shaken 
by a pandemic. And the people have too. And well-being has never been more important in the workplace than it is today. It's so, so important. In fact, it's that important that when ONS launched a survey to companies that were moving to a hybrid working model and asked them the question, what's the main driver for you going to hybrid? 79% of the respondents came back saying that improved staff well-being was the main driver. That's 79%. And that really shows how important well-being is going forward. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not talking about wrapping up people in cotton wool and you know, making it all cushy and easy and letting them get away with stuff. I'm talking about well-being that's going to drive their productivity and the efficiencies in the business itself. And it's about creating spaces that are going to boost that. And it makes sense. For most companies, staffing is going to be the biggest investment they'll make for many businesses, and it makes absolute sense to look after them, make, you get, make sure you get the most out of them. The workplace should be about nurturing that talent and developing it too, making the most of your staff. So how do we do this with design? How do we do this with space? First point is to understand who we are, and that's where we often miss out. See, we need to understand who we are as people we are merely human. We're very fragile and very affected by our environments. And that's why design is that important. But more importantly, we need to understand that everybody is different. And that's really, really key. You've got introverts at one end, and you've got extroverts at the complete opposite end of the spectrum, and everything in between. So there's no one environment that's going to be perfect for everybody. So it's about offering that choice. And that's why we always encourage clients when they're going over to a new way of working, doing a big strategy change, that you hold an employee engagement survey or something just to get them engaged in that process so you understand the demographic of your team and then we can actually tell you what's right for them. We'll understand how your people tick. So how do we actually then translate that into a space that's going to boost productivity? I want to take you back to the last time that you went to your favourite restaurant. Just think about that last experience there. Think about that greeting you got as you came in the door. Think about that laughter and happy conversation you experienced as you walked up to your table. Think about that smell of food as you placed your order. How did that make you feel? And did you remember it? You see, we all eat every single day, but we don't necessarily go to our favourite restaurant every day. But we always remember it, and we always look forward to the next time. And that is what a workplace should be like. That's what the office needs to take on. You need to act on the principle of attracting people into your business. You can't drag them in kicking and screaming. So, how do we create experience? Well, we experience space through our five senses. So first of all, sight, and that's easy to get right. That's what everyone associates design with. It's all about pretty pictures and nice spaces, but there's a lot more to it. You've then got taste. You know, what refreshments are you providing, but then air quality. You can taste that too. And you've got touch, so that's all about the materials you're using in a space. The comfort and ergonomics of the space. It's got to be right, and we'll come on to that more in a minute. Hearing. So when you're having a meeting, can you hear everybody properly? Are you getting the message that's being conveyed? And then when you're focusing, are there too many distractions there for you to work? Or have you got some quiet space? And then you've got the smell as well. We all know that. Someone always comes to lunch with a smelly, <laughs> smelly bit of food. We need to manage it all, think it through, and then we can create that great experience. So moving on to design. Firstly, I just wanted to talk about functionality because this is really, really key when we're designing spaces. And particularly when we're looking at an activity-based working model or um, you know, the whole choice, a hybrid model, it's very important to think about functionality. I hear a lot of stories, and I'll probably get a lot of them because of what I do in work, about companies that have gone over to a hot desking model or an agile working, and the whole thing went wrong. And we all ended up sitting at our own desks then. I expect you've probably heard stories like that before too. 
And I'd say 90% of the times I hear these stories, it's down to the functionality, the infrastructure was completely wrong, and it actually made it collapse. So we absolutely need to get it right. Now, there's three things we always tell our clients to make sure they manage when they do this big move. Firstly, is management. How you communicate that with your staff. How the policies you put in place. Secondly, technology. Now that's obvious, connectivity is about the softwares you use, how you interact when people are working elsewhere. And then environment. And all the point with this is they need to go together and none of them can be missed out. Because otherwise, your people who are sitting on these pillars, if you take one of them away, it creates an imbalance and that is where the whole thing falls apart and you end up going back to an old way of working. So I'm going to just dive into two specific examples, and there's so many I couldn't possibly talk about them all today, but I'll try and explain how those work. So firstly, storage. It's a big change, because everyone tends to have their own set of drawers next to their desk or something or other, and they claim that. But when you want them to move around in different spaces, you need to take that away from them. Everyone's still got personal belongings that they need to secure and lock away. So we give them lockers. And often we end up with a, a sort of key lock situation and everyone has their own locker. But we try and sort of spread them out in the space. But what happens there is people always want to sit near their locker. And then, you know, after a while they claim a desk and leave their stuff there and it becomes them, theirs. And you're back to an old way of working again after your efforts to move to an agile environment. So... What is that solution? You need to implement something with storage that is also agile. There's many ways of doing this, but one of the best ways is a hot locker system. And it's particularly good now when we're going to hybrid and you've got less people in the office because you don't have to buy everyone a locker. So it typically runs off an access card or something. You can just tap in and tap out of any locker in the whole workspace as long as it's free. So that will overcome that barrier and stop people moving back to an old way of working. Now, second one is chairs. This is an interesting one. Um, so this is the Mira 2 chair from Herman Miller. Um, it's a great chair, by the way. Very nice, as long as you sit in it every day. It's got about 13 adjustments on it, and you can get it really tailored to you. And that, what that means is if um, you've got a chair set up for yourself, and it's really comfortable, when I come and sit in it, and it's going to be pretty uncomfortable. And that becomes a problem where you're making people sit in different chairs every single day, because you're effectively making them sit in something really uncomfortable. So, what that leads to is people want to sit in the same chair, doesn't it? Fairly obvious. And then they start sitting in the same place and the whole hot desking or agile situation just falls apart. So what's the solution? Thankfully, Herman Miller are pretty hot at this and they've brought out a, a new chair. This is the Cosm and this is an auto-adjust chair. All you need to do is adjust the height and it's got an intelligent mechanism that adjusts everything else for you. Still fire a gold, it's a very good ergonomic chair. But what that means is you can move around sit in any other chair and very easily be comfortable every single day. And it just overcomes that blockage that's going to collapse an agile working environment. So that's two examples of blockages. There's lots more. We need to find them out fast if you're doing a process of going to a new way of working. But we can certainly help you with that. Now, to move on, I'm going to talk about a design trend which is quite prevalent this year. It's called Resi Marshall. Now, this is all about bringing residential design and applying in a commercial setting. And the main driver behind this is where people have been working from home. And when they return to the office, they start missing things. You know, I miss that comfy sofa. I miss the feel of home. So it makes sense just to bring it into the office and attract people in. So what does that actually look like? It affects design in many different ways. On the more simple end of the spectrum, you just have softer areas more relaxed, you see lamps and rugs and curtains coming into the workplace these days and it's just much more residential feel in the workplace. But it also affects spatial design. Now what do I mean by that? It's about the spaces we actually have in the workplace. So here you can see a little lounge area, a little social space. So it's, it's all about those social connections, about reconnecting your staff since they've been working apart for so long and it just mimics the lounge in your house. And what that's doing is just building that team spirit again, which is really, really key and has eroded in many cases over the course of the lockdown. So another example is what we tend to call mega tables. They're just big tables that everyone can sit around. 
can power your laptop, do a bit of work, and quite flexible. And what that's doing is mimicking the dining room table at home. And if you think about that in the family setting, you typically have some children sitting around doing some homework or you know, playing with some toys or something, and parents would be catching up on some work. But everyone sat around that one table doing all different things, and that's what you can do in the workplace. And it's, again, just reconnecting and creating that team bond that we need to get back to. So that's another element of Resi Marshall affecting the way we design spaces. But probably the most challenging for most companies to accept is the way that home life is starting to invade the workplace a bit. But I don't actually think it's a bad thing because um, work life quite invaded my house over lockdown. And so it's about time the workplace gave back. And it's about giving those spaces that people can do things they'd usually do at home. Th simple things like cooking a better meal at midday. A lot of people have commented on that. So better cooking facilities. Yoga, Pilates classes in, in, in the workplace. And you've got um, you know, healthy snacks, you see games areas, even gyms incorporated into offices so people can actually exercise together. And it's all about bringing that home to the office. And it's a really strong trend this year. So that really wraps up what I wanted to talk about. Um, all I would say, um, other than thank you for listening, is if you are thinking of moving over to a more agile working element, just make sure you do it properly. Don't miss, miss the key bits out, otherwise it could easily collapse. You can request a copy of our little book, which has got some really useful hints and tips um, that will help you on your way. But other than that, thank you very much for listening. That's a very good question. It's, um, it does depend a little bit on what, how far you take it. Typically, Resi Marshall is more expensive, expensive than a, a standard fit-out. You're seeing some additional elements that before just weren't there. Um, so obviously, curtains are uh, more expensive than your average blinds. I couldn't exactly put a number on it because we, they, they vary from office to office. But yes, you are, you are looking at a higher investment. Yep. Thank you. Does anybody else have any more questions? Good, that's what I like to see. Thank you. Thank you.